Manufacturing is the country's fourth largest industry, contributing about 14% to the gross domestic product. However, as much as the sector contributes to the GDP, it needs the support from the tooling sector. The question is, how can the growth of the tooling industry help the country have a viable manufacturing sector? Good evening, my name is Zola Shalwana. Welcome to this edition of So to Today. Tonight, we talk about the manufacturing and tooling sector and how the sector can help in the creation of much needed jobs for South Africans. We're joined in studio by the Head of Communications and Stakeholder Relations at Production Technologies Association, SA, Ms. Buidumelo Musubi. Ms. Buidumelo, welcome to Soda Today. Thank, Thank you for joining you us. Thank you so much for having me. Now, let's begin here. What is Production Technologies Association, SA, all about? As the name, as our name says, we are an association and um, we mainly speak, we are the, we're the organized voice of the tool making industry. Um, now you probably will ask me what tool making is, mm -hmm. right? So tool making, uh, tool makers make things that make things in order for you to have Just your iPad for, for, for argument's sake. Mm -hmm. um, there is a, a process where a, the, a mold needs to be made in order to press the parts. The screen is made by a mold. Your back cover is made by a mold. Your bottle of water that you drink on a daily, um, the, the tooling is associated in that. So in order for anything to be made, uh, a tool maker is required. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now tell us how much support does, does the tool making industry offer to the manufacturing sector? We are the heartbeat of manufacturing because without a tool maker, without tools, mm -hmm. there will be no manufacturing. Um, so the manufacturing industry, let's take it back to our forefathers who would make say, argument's sake, sculptures mm -hmm. way back. Your grandfather would take six months to make one, right? Mm -hmm. So with, with, um, with tool making and industrialization, we've gotten to the point where tools are made in mm -hmm. order for, um, for that sculpture to make, instead of one a month or one in six months, mm -hmm. to make a thousand in an hour, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So now, the, the, it's no secret that mm -hmm. in South Africa there's a shortage of skills and also, now that you talk about a tool making, how can we better address you know, the issue of skills shortage mm -hmm. in South Africa to ensure that people are equipped you know, um, with services, right, or other skills mm -hmm. you know, that they need? Um, yeah, so, so tool making is one of the top scarce skills in the country. Mm -hmm. And it's always been a scarce skill because um, even in the, in the past, say 20, 30 years ago, mm -hmm. the tool makers that were in the country were of foreign, um, they were foreign nationals. Not you would sure. have your, your Portuguese or your Italians that would all come here to be tool makers. So we've barely had um, industry that we've, we owned. Mm -hmm. But back then, um, all our things were done um, in-house. We never would import mm -hmm. unlike what we do now where everything comes from comes from outside so mm -hmm. um tool making really is the heartbeat of manufacturing um mm -hmm. so uh, by having one tool maker you essentially create 27 jobs mm -hmm. right so because you've got a tool maker that needs to create a, uh, um, the tool that you're creating for whatever it could be this mm -hmm. table could be your your shoes um the, the one tool maker then will, will need support from 27 other people um, so that that then in turn will, will assist us in, in, in solving our unemployment issue. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think is a challenge, you know, because you, you just said one tool maker would create 27 jobs mm -hmm. and I think that would actually solve the issue of unemployment mm -hmm. that we have mm -hmm. in South Africa. What do you think is the cause of not having this industry being known by people? <sighs> It was never known by previously disadvantaged people. Um, I didn't know about tool making until I got into the company. Um, mm -hmm. So it's not, it's not something that is, that is um, taught in, in career guidance at schools. Mm -hmm. It is not something that we're exposed to. And, okay. and even um, currently you walk into a manufacturing house, you get into a Ford that mm -hmm. has got um, very, very big um, manufacturing spaces. Mm -hmm. The tool room is usually like a little corner there mm -hmm. at, at the end, you know? Mm -hmm. It's not something that is, that is um, easily seen, it's not something that is, that is easily exposed. Mm -hmm. That is why there's no knowledge. But as, as, we, are, as we are growing and as an association mm -hmm. and the need is there, um, then, then um, we're, we're creating a bit more, I'm going to say traction in, in educating. I think okay. that the big thing is that we need to educate. We need the, mm -hmm. the guidance teachers to know that tool making is an option. We need mm -hmm. to get to a point where um, 
kids don't want to go to university and study and have degrees that they sit and do nothing with because of the lack of employment. But mm -hmm. get into skills because with, with a skill like tool making, mm -hmm. you're, you're almost guaranteed mm -hmm. to be employed. 96% mm -hmm. of our learners mm -hmm. are are taken up by companies even before they graduate. Mm -hmm. So we are, we're, we're sure that we're, we're solving the, mm -hmm. the unemployment with the students that we have. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now you mentioned um, you know, previously disadvantaged people mm -hmm. and also the fact that they're not really quite informed about mm -hmm. you know, what we're mm -hmm. talking about. What are you doing as an association to make sure that they also get on board? 99% um, of our students um, might be off. Okay. Um, come from previously disadvantaged um, uh, homes, okay. right? Mm -hmm. um, so we, the focus over the last, the, 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 the program has been running since 2010. So we're talking mm -hmm. 12 years 12 or so. Years. But mm -hmm. before that, um, there was a lot of discussions um, in the background with, between industry and the government. And, and that is how the PTSA was, um, was created, right? Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, because it's so expensive to train as a tool maker, mm -hmm. a lot of our students, not a lot, all of the students that we've had over the past 12 years mm -hmm. have been given um, bursaries. They've come through the program mm -hmm. um, paid for by the DTIC. Okay. So we've opened that um, ease of access mm -hmm. to people who are previously disadvantaged, right? Mm -hmm. So that is, that is how um, the association is assisting in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, now, the, the fourth industrial revolution is more than just, you know, technology-driven change. It's also an opportunity to help people to create an um, inclusive, human-centered future, right? Mm -hmm. So how can we use this opportunity to better address the skyrocketing um, unemployment rate in, in South Africa? Um, phew. Um, look, the tool-making is, is, is at, the, at, at the forefront of mm -hmm. the foyer mm -hmm. in order for... for um, in order for manufacturing the, the manufacturing sector mm -hmm. to, to move with the times, mm -hmm. you need tool makers that are keeping up with the times. Mm -hmm. So the curriculum that we've got currently is not the curriculum that was used in the 1980s mm -hmm. to train the tool makers. The, com um, um, the company, the association went through a process of, of upskilling our curriculum, right? Mm -hmm. We are now at a point where um, we need to re-upskill mm -hmm. because there's robotics coming in, there's, mm -hmm. there's all sorts of uh, 3D printing and all of those things. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that we're looking into mm -hmm. in order to make our um, tool makers relevant to, to the times. Mm -hmm. yeah. Obviously our conversation is going to continue after this. Now PTSA has a mission statement that they promote, protect and support um, the collective interest of the tool and machining industries of South Africa in continual support of the growth and development of all manufacturing sectors. After the ad break we will dive into that. Make sure that you don't go anywhere. Welcome back. You are still watching Soda Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. If you've just tuned in, we are unpacking the importance of growing the tool making industry to ensure that the manufacturing sector is well equipped. And we are still joined by the head of communications and stakeholder relations at PTSA. Now, let's talk about international collaborations in growing um, the tool making industry. Do you have any of those, perhaps? Um, maybe we need to take it back a step. And, mm -hmm. and speak about where the PTSA started, mm -hmm. right? Um, 17 or so years ago, there was a need that was recognized by the association mm -hmm. that um, tool making in the country is going down. Mm -hmm. and, and, if, and, and that in effect is, is affecting the growth of manufacturing at, in at the GDP of manufacturing. Mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, the, the, the team at the time okay. then, um, uh, reached out to the DTIC mm -hmm. um, in order to get funding to start up a program that is going to re rehabilitate the tooling, um, the tooling industry in mm -hmm. order to support manufacturing, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that is how the PTSA was formed. Mm -hmm. um, so it is, it is actually, in essence, a collaboration between uh, government in the form of the DTIC and industry in the form mm -hmm. of PTSA, which stands for the tooling industry, which is the organized voice for the tooling industry. Mm -hmm. um, and that, and, and the, the PTSA then runs two different programs. Mm -hmm. One, for skills development, mm -hmm. um, where our um, um, 
the key we, we, we train in mm -hmm. is, um, is tool making. So our flag, flagship program is tool making. We do have um, a lower level, NQF level three courses that we do train. We've got even masters in, in, in tooling, mm -hmm. um, but our flagship is the tool making. Mm -hmm. And then on the other end, the focus is um, enterprise development, mm -hmm. where we take um, companies within tooling, within uh, manufacturing, benchmark them against companies that do the same thing internationally, mm -hmm. um, and, and get them to, to operate on, on, an, on a standard that is internationally recognized, right? Mm -hmm. So in both those, in both those um, ends, in the skills, we are partnered, we are actually the Africa representative mm -hmm. of NIMS, um, and I'm going to get it wrong if I tell you what NIMS stands for, so I, <laughs> let's, let's rather not, okay. right? Um, so it, it, is, it is an American um, uh, accreditation, mm -hmm. and um, so our students then leave mm -hmm. with 17 certificates mm -hmm. um, f that are internationally recognized. So a student that is trained here in South Africa could pick up and go to Portugal or wherever, mm -hmm. walk into a factory and say, I'm a toolmaker, I've got NIMS qualifications, mm -hmm. and it's internationally recognized. Mm -hmm. And then on the other end, with our enterprise development, the, um, the um, collaboration is with the WBA. I'm also not going to tell you what that, uh, mm -hmm. that abbreviation stands for. Um, so the WBA then helps us with, with the benchmarking and the interventions to assist these companies mm -hmm. to, to operate on, on, on an international level, if I can put it that way. Okay, you mentioned the, gov uh, the, the government and also the partnership. How, how important um, is for the government to partner with mm. associations or rather invest in mm. such associations like yours? If the DTI had not come in and assisted with, the tool, with, with tool making at the point that they did, um, mm -hmm. we believe that the tooling industry would have completely died down um, mm -hmm. in the country and, and um, a lot of a lot more of, mm -hmm. of, of the tools in the country would have had to be ex um, would have brought to be imported. Mm -hmm. um, we, we, we've got an issue with, with the fact that we still have we still have that because the industry is not hasn't been hasn't recovered to a point where it's, mm -hmm. it's standing alone. Mm -hmm. We still have a lot of import. Um, there's a lot of um, um, tools, large tools that are mm -hmm. that are used press tools that are used in in automotive in the automotive se uh, sector for argument's sake that we can that we do not have the capacity to. Mm -hmm. um, to create on our own, so mm -hmm. um, government government assistance, government intervention is very very important. Mm -hmm. So the, the, our program as a whole, both um, the, our skills development as well as our enterprise development, have purely been funded mm -hmm. by by the gov by, by the DTIC. Um, a, a few years ago, we also had um, an injection from the National Skills Fund, mm -hmm. um, and we're, we're in the process of applying for grants through the Mesita through the National Skills Fund as well, because mm -hmm. because training toolmakers is so expensive. Um, mm -hmm. It really does assist in, in um, having partnerships with government. Mm -hmm. Now, tell us about the response from the public um, after you established this great association. Mm -hmm. How do people receive it? Like we spoke about earlier, this mm -hmm. is not something that is known. Mm -hmm. So tool, tool making is still very um, unknown. Mm -hmm. So the drive is to actually educate. Mm -hmm. And we, we educate um, in schools, we need to educate in, um, in homes because a lot of our students that we, we take in come in not knowing what toolmaking is about. Mm -hmm. They'll see it by chance, take mm -hmm. a chance and apply and get accepted, but they know nothing about toolmaking. Fortunately mm -hmm. for them, we don't, we, don't, we don't take them on because we, we don't take them on because we want, mm -hmm. <laughs> we want people that, that know what toolmaking is. Mm -hmm. We take them on, we do rigorous testing before we, we uh, rigorous selection process, we test them on a lot of things. And what we are looking for is just to see that they're a match, not necessarily that um, mm -hmm. they know what toolmaking is about, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that is, um, yeah, that, mm -hmm. is, that is where we're at. Mm -hmm. I actually want um, to understand what are the requirements, you know, when you're looking at these candidates mm -hmm. that you select, mm -hmm. what do you look at? We look at, you need to have maths and physics, mm -hmm. right? So um, uh, people, anybody that is interested in, in, in applying can go onto our, our website, ptsa.co.za. The requirements mm -hmm. are there, but if a student has got maths and science, um, physical science, then Mm -hmm. um, then that's step one of applications. Then they go through screening and, and, and um, all sorts of all sorts mm -hmm. of tests before mm -hmm. before they're selected. Yeah. Earlier on, you spoke about um, you know making sure that the candidate walks away with seventeen certificates. Yeah. What are those certificates? Okay. So so these this, these NIMS qualifications um, are okay. We're going to take it a step back just so it's, it's clearer, mm -hmm. right? Um, they. 
So two, making, two makers cut steel, okay. mainly, right? right? You're going to take a piece of steel, you're going to cut it on the inside, make mm. shapes, or, and then, um, then you blow your plastic in order to come up with a bottle. Mm -hmm. So uh, there, are there are different machines that mm -hmm. are used through the process. Okay. So you've got, you've got machines that are called conventional machines that were used in, this, in the 80s. Mm -hmm. um, and so we, we test the students on, on that skill. So every, every one of, of the different machines mm -hmm. has got a certificate. Mm -hmm. So you, you do the theory, mm -hmm. you cut the piece, you, your piece goes out to be, to be um, evaluated externally. We don't, we don't evaluate internally. Mm -hmm. They get ex evaluated externally. Um, you pass and you write an online examination to prove that mm -hmm. um, you've got an understanding of the knowledge and mm -hmm. you get a certificate. So mm -hmm. you get a certificate on a on a lathe machine, for argument's sake, then okay. you are a lathe operator. Oh. You can walk in with your lathe operator certificate okay. and say, I'm able to cut steel on, on a lathe machine. Oh, okay, and I yes. understand. I'm very certain that after this, you know, this conversation, after this episode, some people are going to really show interest and actually find out about what mm -hmm. we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Now, it's time for us to take a short breather, and after the ad break, we will talk about how members of the public can get involved. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching Soda Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. Now we have reached the last segment of the show and we are still talking about tool making and the benefits of it. Now, um, before the ad break, I mentioned that we'll be talking about how members of the public can get involved um, in the association. For those who are interested, is there any specific qualification that you need to have to be in the manufacturing sector? Within tool making, um, if you want to join our programs, you basically just need metric or metric equivalent with maths and science. Mm -hmm. You apply, go through the application process, and um, and then you can easily join in order to to, to become a toolmaker within PTSA. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So basically, you take anyone from any province as long as you meet the yeah. requirements. So we've got we've got four campuses nationally. Mm -hmm. We've got one in Gauteng in Pretoria, one in Cape Town in Paro, one in Peter Maritzburg in KZN, mm -hmm. and the last one is in PE in Tebeja. Okay. Um, yeah, so anybody from, from anywhere um, can apply as long as they've got a metric, metric equivalent mm -hmm. um, with, with math and science. Mm -hmm. So is there like a specific number that you take per year or you just... Um, it, it all depends on funding. Mm -hmm. um, but we do we do take students that are self-funding, so people can come in and 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 pay for themselves to to go through the program. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got a, currently we are busy actually going through applications for 2023, the March intake. Um, so we take um, we take quite small numbers purely because of budget, mm -hmm. um, because we are funded, um, mm -hmm. and and we're trying to grow into. Um, self-funding students mm -hmm. so that that's a, that's a new market that we are we're, ta we're tapping into mm -hmm. um, so our numbers have been small because of because of budgetary issues mm -hmm. um, so March we are looking at 60 65 students mm -hmm. um, but we are hoping that we can get mm -hmm. at least 50 percent of that that will self-fund mm -hmm. all right now are there any courses that one should take you know before qualifying as a tool maker specifically no, um, fresh out of metric, maths and science, you're good to go. Mm -hmm. um, and like I was saying earlier, you, um, a lot of our students really are taken up by big corporates mm -hmm. um, um, before, before they even finish. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's always a fight um, about our students. There's one uh, manufacturer, car manufacturing company that, that, put, that puts out adverts mm -hmm. and in their recruitment actually mm -hmm. say that they do not want they don't want anybody that hasn't been through the TDM powered program, which mm -hmm. is what we call our training program, the TDM powered apprenticeship. Mm -hmm. Now, for anyone that's sitting at home mm -hmm. and wants to know more, where can they go, or is there like any number that they can contact? Just tell us a bit more about that. Okay, so the number is zero one two seven six zero zero three double zero. Okay. Um, so that number, um, you will be able to to get assistance from there. Our email um, address for any queries mm -hmm. is TDM powered. No, no, no. I'm wrong. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. It is TDM inquiries at ptsa.co.za mm -hmm. and um, our, our website is mm -hmm. ptsa.co.za. Mm -hmm. Now just, just, just tell us about you know, what you hope to see probably in the next five years, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, what you, the products that you'd want to produce mm -hmm. in the next five years as an association. Um, I think the key right now is to, is to be able to get 
a sustainable um, skills development product, pro uh, project going where we have got um, more self-funded students mm -hmm. other than bursary students, mm -hmm. just in order for us to keep the pipeline going. Mm -hmm. Because um, if we do not have self-funding students mm -hmm. and our budget runs dry, then that means the project ends, right? Mm -hmm. And and that is that is then going to be um, negative to the to the manufacturing um, sector that we are trying to support. Mm -hmm. So what we are looking for is. Um, is students that are keen um, to, to come and join and companies that can join our association as well. Um, mm -hmm. Because we speak as a collective, okay. the, the, the more weight we have, the more we can get assistance from the government mm -hmm. or, or get, more, get, get more partnerships because mm -hmm. we will be um, a bit more, we'll be heavier mm -hmm. instead of just me coming and saying, this mm -hmm. is the problem I've got. If I'm speaking on behalf of a bigger group, mm -hmm. it'll, yeah, it'll be more meaningful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you, would you say that you've reached a level where you can actually go to schools, you know, high schools particularly, mm -hmm. and actually talk to learners and also maybe parents and teachers about the importance of actually people, yeah. you know, getting these skills and becoming part of the association? Because I believe that most people are not part of these associations because they're not informed. So have you done anything as an association to make sure that you educate those people that mm -hmm. are not aware so they can be on mm -hmm. board? Okay. So this last week, actually, today is the last day mm -hmm. where we've had open days at all of our campuses, something that we haven't done in a really long time. Um, so we've got, um, at the four campuses, we've had walk-in students, we've, had, we've gone to schools to, to spread the word, to say, come in, have a look at what, mm -hmm. what a machine looks like, have a look at, at, at what the program in, entails, what the, what the program offers. Mm -hmm. So we've had a very successful week with, with students coming in and, and guide, guidance counselors then bringing in their students at, at, at all four provinces. So that is, that is um, yeah, that, that has been the goal, and I think at, we're, we're, we're slowly getting there. Mm -hmm. um, and then in, in terms of educating parents and educating, um, you know, just the community as a whole, mm -hmm. um, that, is, that is something that we still need to do quite rigorously. Mm -hmm. um, but slowly, mm -hmm. we will get there. I think if we start by, um, by just, even if it's just the students who are then mm -hmm. able to go home and say, this is what we do. But we've got, we've got um, fourth year students that still say to their parents, look, I'm a mechanic, because mm -hmm. it's so hard to explain to somebody mm -hmm. exactly what a toolmaker does. So they've, mm -hmm. just, they've just given up, mm -hmm. and, and yeah, the answer is that we are mechanics. Mm -hmm. So how <laughs> yeah. long do the courses usually take? The toolmaker apprenticeship is, mm -hmm. um, is a normal apprenticeship that take anything between four and four and a half years. Mm -hmm. um, then we've got your workshop assistant um, um, uh, uh, course, sorry, that takes up to 18 months to do. Mm -hmm. That is a basic one where you um, you leave with um, just knowledge of machines. You're, you've, you've got um, safety and, and, and can walk into a factory and add mm -hmm. value because unlike, you know how um, you'll have outside of all these factories, people just waiting mm -hmm. for the gates to be open so that they can take a few of them to assist inside. Mm -hmm. The manufacturing assistants that leave from us will then have a mm -hmm. qualification. It's an NQF level three qualification. And, and they add value when they walk into the manufacturing company because they will understand mm -hmm. how, the, how the, the, the factory works. They will understand the safety features and, and all of that, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know, I just feel like I've learned so much from this conversation. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I am sure, I'm, I'm actually certain that there are people that will want to find out about the association and also, mm -hmm. um, you know, how they can actually, you know, become students as well. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, like you mentioned, one of the biggest challenges is also funding and mm -hmm. all of that. Mm -hmm. But the more they get educated about this, mm -hmm. the more they show interest in that. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate um, having you here and we wish you all the best and the association. It was an honor. Thank you. Well, that was the Head of Communications and Stakeholders Relations of the P Production Technologies Association. Association South Africa gracing us with her presence and talking to us about tool making and the importance of investing more in the manufacturing sector in South Africa. Well, that's how we wrap up today's episode of So Edit Today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to engage with us by simply sending us an email on soetotoday at soetotv.co.za. Alternatively, you can contact us on 011-933-3000. From myself and the rest of the team, we will see you on the next news bulletin that's coming right after this. So, goodbye for now.